Hey, so let me guess, you wanna know what the pros and cons are of living in Surrey, British Columbia? Well, I got you covered. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the pros and cons that come with living in this amazing city. And uh, make sure you guys stay until the end of the video, because at the end of the video, I'm actually gonna be showing you guys the main con that comes with living in this city. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to stay tuned for that, all right? So uh, see you in the video, guys. Hey guys, it's Aaron Sangera here with Prestige Property Group and me and my team absolutely love helping people that are either looking to move out here or just relocate out here to Vancouver or the surrounding suburbs, guys. So first things first, make sure you guys hit that notification button and that uh, subscribe button down below so that this way every week when we do put out videos, you guys are the first people to see them. And then secondly, uh, I also have my phone number is going to be listed down below so you could either contact us via phone call or contact us via email, uh, whatever ultimately works best for you guys. Um, we have tons of people that are looking to relocate out here and they're moving out here and that uh, ultimately want our help, but we'd love to be able to help you guys out too when you guys do decide to come out here. So feel free to reach out absolutely anytime. And uh, other than that, let's kind of get to the video. Okay, so now let's get to the first pro. The first pro that we're looking at when living in Surrey, British Columbia is the easy accessibility to get around the rest of the lower mainland, guys. So the one thing that you will notice about Surrey, British Columbia is this, is it's, it's located geographically literally right in the middle of the lower mainland, meaning it's perfect for you to either get to Vancouver and that, the rest of the lower mainland over there, or to even go to uh, the Fraser Valley. So like Abbotsford, Chilliwack, Hope, places like that. Um, we're literally directly right in the middle. So what you'll notice is in order to get to Abbotsford, Chilliwack and Hope, it's nice and simple because you're just gonna jump on uh, the Trans-Canada Highway and it'll lead you there. Honestly, you could get to Abbotsford within 45 minutes. You could get towards Chilliwack in about an hour. It ultimately just depends on the traffic. And then uh, the also good thing that comes with that is the fact that on the contrary, um, instead of going to the Fraser Valley, if you are someone that's gonna be commuting to Vancouver and the rest of the lower mainland a little bit more, you're gonna notice the Portman Bridge, the Patello Bridge, and the Alex Verger Bridge are actually located right there, close by. Um, ultimately, it depends where you live in Surrey, but if you're living in actual central Surrey and North Surrey, that's the area that you're gonna be, it's gonna be located a lot more closer by, but if you live in South Surrey and White Rock, even then it's gonna be nice, quick accessibility to get to the rest of the lower mainland as well because the highway is located right there. Uh, and another good thing comes with the fact if you're living in South Surrey and White Rock, the border is located close by. Um, obviously due to COVID, there's are restrictions, but when they do decide to open that up, it is gonna be nice and easy for you to go back and forth through there too. So that is kind of one of the main pros that people do love about living in Surrey is it's easy to get around. So if your job's in Burnaby, Richmond, Vancouver, uh, places like that, and uh, let's say even if you don't have a vehicle, worst case scenario, you can just jump on the SkyTrain, commute to the, to the rest of the lower mainland, and just commute to your place of work. Um, and then even if you have a car, the bridges are located really close by too. So it's not gonna be a pain for you to get around. It's gonna be nice and easy. And uh, so that's the reason why is the accessibility and kind of the geographical location of where Surrey is. It just makes it nice and easy to commute around the rest of the, uh, to commute around all the cities that are located close by. So that's definitely one of the main pros that come with living here. Okay, so now moving on to the second pro. The second pro, what we have in Surrey is we got all the amazing things to do and all the great eateries in the area, guys. So there's tons and tons of different places to try here. Um, so let's say if you're looking for Indian food, you got Tasty Indian Bistro. They literally have everything you need to be trying in regards to Indian food. They have it, right? Samosas, um, curries with dolls and uh, rotis and rice and everything, right? So everything that you feel that you guys are going to need when going to an Indian restaurant, they got it. Uh, you got Bozzini's restaurant, which is this amazing uh, Greek food place that has, they got, uh, they got shawarmas, they got, uh, so honestly, they have everything that you really need to think of. In regards to Greek food, they have it, so you guys should try that too. Um, they also have Captain's Oven's Pizza, which is honestly one of the best pizza places in all of Surrey. They have true authentic Italian style pizzas that you have to try that. And uh, also there's Guacamole Grill, which is one of my favorite Mexican food places in all of Surrey, so you have to try them too. They got papasas, they got burritos, they got quesadillas, they got tortas, they got literally everything. So that's another one of the places that you guys definitely have to try out. So long story short, what you'll kind of notice is there's tons of different diversity and multiculturalism that's located here in Surrey. So you name the type of foods, they're gonna have it here. Um, so definitely that's something that you guys gotta try too. Um, and then on top of that, it's like all the amazing things to do in the area as well. So, and then in regards to all the things to do, you can go go-karting, there's escape rooms, you can go play golf, there's 
so many different bars and lounges. Now, obviously due to COVID, there are restrictions, but when all this stuff kind of passes by, what you will notice is there's tons of different bars and lounges to get together in Surrey. So that's another one of the main pros that come with uh, with living here. And then on top of that, um, obviously when it's a little bit more better weather than what it is now, as we're heading into the winter, you know, Crescent Beach, White Rock Beach are some amazing places to go to. Just, you know, go to the beach, sit by the beach, read a book and just hang out or go on the water and just, you know, do some water sports. You know, you can go jet skiing, boating, whatever, right? Um, just try to be creative, but there's tons of things to do. And that is one of the main things that people love about Surrey is instead of having to commute outside of the city to go do a lot of the things, which you do have to do a lot of times when living here. Um, the one good thing that comes with living in Surrey is you don't necessarily have to commute out to do a lot of those things since a lot of the things to do like the escape rooms um, you could go ice skating you could go there's honestly so many different things to do that it just comes down to what you enjoy uh, to do and then kind of just finding that in uh, in surrey but you will find tons of different activities and stuff like that um, whether you're older you're an older adult a middle-aged man or even a kid so a teenager a child there, there's tons of different things to do in the city so just kind of get creative and just find uh, all the activities it just depends ultimately on what you enjoy doing uh, in your spare time and then lastly, one of the main pros that you'll notice is there's tons of things to do outdoors. There's tons of outdoor activities and there are tons of different nat like nature parks and parks in general in Surrey. So you're gonna really wanna check those out. Whether you like to go running, hiking, biking, um, just get out for a picnic. There's honestly tons of different places to go and get together. Um, let's just use like, I'll just name off just a few parks. The Bear Creek Park is one. They got this uh, huge track that you can actually run around. So it's just a normal track. Um, like those Olympic tracks that people just run around so you can go for a jog or run. They also have a water park, so that's a great place to bring the kids during the spring and uh, summer months. They also have a soccer field, so um, if you're an avid soccer fan or a sports fan, they have, they have those soccer fields for you to kind of get together with friends and family and play a big game. Or they also do have um, actual organized sporting events that go on there too. So if you are a fan of soccer, you could always join one of the organized clubs here. And then I think like every Sunday they end up playing at the fields out there. So that's another great thing too. And then on top of that, um, there's also just like the little neat, like the nature trails and stuff like that, that uh, Bear Creek Park has as well. So that's another fantastic reason to kind of get around that park. And then on top of that, there's also a Tynehead Park, which uh, the only difference you'll notice between, between Tynehead and Bear Creek is Bear Creek's um, kind of like it's uh, an area to kind of get together with, with like your kids and friends and family and just kind of hang out and uh, while your kids play on the playground and stuff. But Tynehead is its own kind of this na uh, na nature park. So, you know, it's about, uh, last time I recall, I think it was about six kilometers. I'll, I'll recheck. But uh, I know it's about two miles is how much it ends up being when you're running the whole track. But it's actually walkable. You can walk around it. It's not too um, difficult of a track. It ultimately depends on which way you're going. But that's actually a fantastic place too to just go for a walk, just get out and about with the kids and the family and friends and also just go for a run. Uh, I know me and my friends and family, we like to go for runs there too. It depends which way you're going, but when you're going the opposite way where the hill's actually uh, facing up towards the end, you're running like a good, probably like, I'd probably say like one, 1. 1.7 miles. And then uh, it's like 0. 0.3 or 0. 0.2 miles of just uphill at the end. So it is a really difficult track. So if you are someone that kind of likes to get outdoors and, and run around like I do, it is a great place to kind of get to, uh, just go out there and do some exercise. And then lastly, another place I suggest is Fleetwood Park. Over there you have you have a tennis park, a tennis field. So if you're someone that actually likes to play tennis, I'm terrible at it myself, but if you like to play, it's a great place to get together with uh, your friends and family and just play. Um, they also have these this amazing like garden. And uh, so it's like this garden space that you kind of walk through. They call it a scenic garden. And you'll notice a bunch of like rare plants there. And then actually what they actually have is this floral garden and these sculptured uh, art pieces. So when you're actually going through Fleetwood Park, you'll notice this like scenic garden um, and stuff like that. So kind of go through there and you'll notice it's actually a beautiful place to go. Just uh, you could have a picnic there. During spring and summer months is usually the best time, but if it's not a wet rainy day, it is a great place to still get together with family and friends. And then also there are a lot of like green space around there too. So like soccer fields and stuff like that too. So um, if you bring your dog, you could get him to run around or you can also play like a game of football or soccer, something with, uh, with your friends and family as well. So that's another great place to kind of get together. But honestly, just search parks in Surrey. You'll find a ton of them. And just look at them right um there's honestly a a lot so just kind of see which one works best for you guys and then just check them out when you guys are in the area okay so now moving on from the pros 
Let's move on to the cons that come with living in this city, guys. So one of the main cons that come with living in the city is the crime rate, guys. So the Lower Mainland in general, we're looking at the Lower Mainland and Fraser Valley, uh, Tri-Cities, essentially anywhere in Vancouver and the surrounding suburbs, Surrey is actually has one of the highest crime rates. It actually has the highest crime rate um, in all the Lower Mainland. So with that comes the fact that there is a reason why Surrey has a huge stigma and why people that you know, when you come out to Vancouver, you'll notice a lot of people that don't necessarily live here do have a bad representation of this area because a lot of people see it as what a majority of the news talks about it as, is it's just a crime riddled area with tons of gang violence, uh, petty crimes, vandalism, theft, stuff like that, right? Carjackings, so uh, drug use, like you'll see tons of stuff like that in Surrey and honestly, to a certain extent, it is true, but that doesn't make up a majority of the city, but it is one of the main reasons why people do see that as one of the main cons with living here is the fact that the crime rate here is really high, um, just in general. So that doesn't mean that you need to be walking on eggshells when living here because it is a nice place to raise a family and live, but it ultimately comes down to the neighborhoods you're living in. So my suggestion would be, if you're looking at living in Wally, um, certain parts of Newton, and uh, even Sullivan Heights now, or even Cloverdale, it depends. You need to be making sure that you're actually living in a certain safe community because those neighborhoods, although they are good, they do tend to have some sort of, um, they do tend to have crime in those areas. So it just ultimately depends on which pockets of those neighborhoods you're living in because in certain pockets of those neighborhoods, it's, you're not gonna have as much crime and stuff like that. So let's just use like Fraser Heights as an example. It's one of the main, I guess, posh neighborhoods in Surrey. and that's an area where you're not going to see a lot of crime um, and the same with like north delta as a majority too which is another suburb literally right next to surrey so you don't necessarily uh, necessarily see a lot of crime in those areas per se but you do tend to see uh, a lot of crime just in general in surrey so that is one of the main things that you guys do want to be on a lookout for is just make sure you know you're taking the change out of your car if you're living in like uh, wally cedar hills and newton and stuff like that because in the middle of the night you will have people breaking into your cars um, there are drug users, it ultimately depends, like on King George and 72nd, um, you do, do see prostitutes and uh, homeless people and drug addicts and, and uh, just stuff like that too. So it's not all like glitz and glamour, there are lots of places around Surrey where um, it isn't the greatest place to go, but that also doesn't make it a terrible place to live, it just makes it as one of the main cons you guys should watch out when living here. But yeah, uh, just wanted to let you guys know that too, but yeah, the crime rate here is a little high, but again, it does, it varies on neighborhood to neighborhood and which areas of Surrey you're ultimately living. So now moving on from the crime rate, let's move on to the next con, which is the traffic and the slow drivers, guys. So one thing you'll notice is, let's let's just use Vancouver as, as an example. When you go to Vancouver, there's tons of congestion and tons of cars, but the reason for that is they have a bigger population than Surrey has. So the one thing you'll notice about Surrey is, Surrey has almost, let's just say about half of what the population that Vancouver has. But what you'll notice is the traffic here and just slow drivers in general, it's honestly very difficult to get around sometimes. And I feel like it, that's not just dependent on the fact that it's the slow drivers in traffic, but it's also the fact that the way Surrey has set up their, the way the Surrey has set up all of their, uh, all the roads and like the systems like that in general, because in Vancouver, you'll notice a majority of it is like freeways and uh, one road will take you literally from one end of the city to the other. But the one thing about Surrey is there's, you're going to be driving through a lot more inner roads. Uh, and even when you're on like the main roads, like King George, 132, 128, when you're driving down those roads during traffic hours, so anywhere between 3 p.m., let's say 2.30 to 7, right? being difficult. I'd probably say 6.30, but seven o'clock even sometimes, it depends on weekdays, it's gonna be congested. So in order to literally get from, let's just say um, 64 Avenue, all the way to the other end of Surrey towards let's say Patello Bridge. So um, what you're actually looking at is probably, realistically with no cars, you're probably gonna be getting there within 15, 10, 15 minutes, probably long as 20. With traffic, you're looking at probably it taking you between 45 minutes to an hour just to get from one side of Surrey to the other. So that is one thing that people do find really difficult here is for the fact that Surrey is somewhat of a big thing, it's a suburb, it's a suburb of Vancouver. So because of that, most people wouldn't think that the traffic here is as bad as it is, but you know, due to the slow drivers, tons of people here not necessarily even knowing the rules of the road. So, you know, example would be you go to a four way stop, it's pretty self-explanatory. The first car that gets there is gonna be the one that goes, but you will see people kind of directing traffic and you do tend to see stuff like that a lot 
um, in Surrey, which there is nothing wrong with it when some, some people are trying to be selfless and be like, oh, you know, you could go ahead, you could go ahead when you're at a four-way stop sign. But ultimately, the rules of the road are the rules of the road for a reason and they're trying to make sure everyone's safe. So when people do do that, sometimes you, I have seen traffic, uh, traffic accidents caused because of that. So that is one of the main things that you will have an issue with living here is it is a real pain getting around the whole city in general. Um, so even going from, let's say, Surrey Central all the way to South Surrey, it's going to take you a while, right? So it ultimately depends. During traffic hour, that commute could take you anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half, just getting from one end of Surrey to South Surrey. So as you can tell, the, the traffic here is pretty bad, um, but it's not just Surrey in general as much as it is the lower mainland in general. But one thing you do need to know, uh, one thing you do tend to notice is it does, you do tend to notice it a little bit more in Surrey just based off the fact that the congestion here is just really bad, guys. Getting around the rest of the city, uh, I'll notice when I jump on the highway, uh, it could take me sometimes about 20 to 30 minutes just to get on the bridge sometimes with traffic. And as soon as I'm on the bridge, let's say Portman Bridge, it'll literally take me 10, 15 minutes to get towards Burnaby and North Vancouver. So you can just tell that the main issue is kind of just driving around the actual uh, main parts of Surrey, um, that becomes a big pain. So that is something that you guys want to watch out for when moving out here. Okay, so now moving on to the last con that comes with living in Surrey, British Columbia. It's kind of that general carefree attitude that a majority of the people here have. So what you'll notice is a majority of the people here kind of have a, a real carefree attitude for things that don't have anything to do with them. So a prime example is, let's just use Diwali. So uh, during Diwali, obviously it's a festival for Punjabi people, um, which is great, but what you do tend to notice is a majority of people that aren't Punjabi don't like when people are blowing off fireworks till late in the evening and being really loud and obnoxious and all these things. So even though it is a holiday, you don't necessarily need to um, like just be obnoxiously loud essentially, right? And not care about your neighbors and people that are kind of close by. So what you'll notice is people will keep blowing up fireworks till late in the evening. People will be loud. People will have parties at their house till late in the evening. They don't necessarily care that their neighbors um, are getting annoyed with that or care about the fact that other people might have an issue. And that is something that not even just myself, but a lot of people I tend to talk to about Surrey uh, tend to say is they just don't like that carefree attitude because it's almost like when things have to do um, with those people then. So if, let's say if something comes up with those certain individuals, um, those same people blowing up firecrackers, if something was to happen to them, then all of a sudden it's a, it's kind of a big issue in the neighborhood and, and you're going to be hearing people complaining about it. Um, but vice versa, when, you know, they're doing it, then it's not an issue. So let's just say if you had an old school cutlass and you were just revving it up, revving it up, um, if those same people that were blowing up firecrackers, uh, heard that car and they had a problem with it, they'll complain and they'll actually get mad at you, which is kind of crazy because vice versa, when you're telling them, hey, can you um, stop blowing up fireworks? Can you stop being so loud? We have work in the morning, etc." Then it's an issue. But when it kind of has to do with them, then it's kind of like it's it's a weird it's a weird thing that you'll kind of notice here in Surrey is is a majority of the people, if it has to do with them, then they'll care about it. If it doesn't have to do with them, they're not going to care about it. So that is generally what you see. So let's say like if your house was to get broken into, um, my neighbors are actually really nice. One of the few nice neighbors. So he'll actually look up a majority of people. They're not going to care. They're not going to care if your house is broken into. Uh, they're not going to care if your car is broken into. They're not going to care about things like that, which a majority of the neighborhoods in the lower mainland, you will have neighbors that will watch out for that for you and kind of realize that even if we all live in the same neighborhood, we should all try to, you know, um, like do what's best for one another, right? Not just self selfishly just worry about myself and uh, my own being and, you know, me having a loud, obnoxious party and uh, people getting it at my house, etc. right? So that's kind of like the main issue that you do tend to see is people are kind of self-centered here and they're kind of in their own world. And uh, when things have to do with them, then it becomes an issue. But when it doesn't have to do with them, then it's not necessarily an issue, right? So that is kind of the tough part that people have with living here is is that right so um that yeah it is it is kind of tough so that is one of the things you'll notice is uh that kind of that carefree attitude and people not really giving a, a darn if they're uh, being obnoxious to you as a neighbor or um another thing another issue is you know having that carefree attitude so uh, i actually have a neighbor in my actually he just built the house uh, behind me and they built a new build they literally built that house almost it's only probably about two 
three feet away from the fence. So half the time when they're in the backyard, they're literally peeking over into my yard and listening to all of our conversations, listening to what I'm talking about, if I'm on the phone, stuff like that. So it is kind of weird because you have these nosy neighbors and people that aren't necessarily um, just minding their own business, which is kind of crazy because then when those same individuals are being loud and obnoxious and you're telling them to kind of quiet down the ruckus, then it becomes an issue. So like these are kind of the main things you'll notice about Surrey is uh, it's that carefree attitude and people only giving a darn about certain things until that has to do with themselves. So that is uh, a big issue with here. But hopefully that does show you guys the, the pros and cons that come with living in the city. Um, the city is amazing. So don't kind of get that misconstrued and think it's this um, bad area since it is a really good area to raise a family. But it just honestly depends on where you're ultimately living. So uh, yeah, like I said, um, if you guys like this video, hit that like button down below and drop a comment down below and let me know. Uh, what would you say are some of the pros and cons that come with living in uh, Surrey, British Columbia? And if you're not from Surrey, drop a comment down below and give me an idea of so far what you've uh, figured out is probably going to be the main pros and cons that come with living in Surrey. So I'd love to hear that. Also hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below so that this way every week when videos do come out, you guys are the first people to see them. And uh, other than that, like I said, I always try to put out minimum one video a week. Um, I'll be trying to up that to two. I'm going to make sure. So uh, either on Wednesday and Friday, I'll be making sure to have those videos out. And so make sure to stay tuned for those. And uh, other than that, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, talk to you then.